Good evening, my friend. Welcome to WW Radio Live on a shaky table here in Adventureland. In what I might say is the perfect location for a, uh, a show tonight. I'm going to give you a couple minutes to get in, get settled, get a little snack. Hope you brought a little nosh. Maybe a friend. Maybe you want to tag and invite a friend to join us uh, in, if you're watching on the WW Radio page or in the clubhouse. Let me just quickly share this over there I'm uh, as I multitask we have a uh, we because I'm not alone we have a good show tonight well let me rephrase that we have a special guest and then hopefully it'll be a good show let me let me rephrase it that way first things first uh, how's my audio how's the audio I'm trying some some new mics tonight uh, on me and the guest that should be named later uh, Elizabeth nice to see you yes it is cold baby it is cold outside um, although I will say I got very lucky tonight. I found the perfect spot in Adventureland. There's great lights, there's a little light backdrop action, and there's heat coming. So it's perfect. And as I watch the world, and by the world I mean 7,000 strollers go by, uh, Jessica's watching from Chile. Where are you watching from? Not from Chile. In Chile, Pennsylvania. Hold on a second. Let me see. Oh, sorry, it's the Eagles calling. I'm, I can't help it. I just, I have to just relish. Listen, you come into Adventureland, this is what you're going to have to do. It's, <laughs> that child back there is crying about the Eagles and the Cowboys. It was a good weekend. It was a good weekend in the Mangella House as far as uh, as football goes. But, yeah, so tonight, um, it, listen, for me to come out of the house... Put on pants, which I find out they require here in Magic Kingdom. Um, it has to be a special, special evening, and we're gonna do something that I don't think I don't think I've ever done this before. Have we? No. I'm not saying a word. Well, you just said it. You just said it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You're in for a sweet and tasty treat tonight, because all the way from somewhere in Pennsylvania. I don't even know where he lives. Somewhere in Pennsylvania from the Celebrations Magazine Global Headquarters. And by Global Headquarters, I mean Tim's bedroom. It's li- it is the one, the only. Come in closer. Here, here, here. It's little Timmy Foster. I don't... Little Timmy, this is, this is a momentous milestone moment. What is today? Today is January 17th, you did, you, 2024. You did explain all our friends I am from... Philadelphia. I was Philadelphia. this. Why, why this, does, why does this close to walking out on you? Why does Philadelphia ring the bell? Oh, I, I, right, I, I, because you got trapped this weekend in the playoffs. Um, it's fine. It's that. We're not money. talking about no, that. No, we are. Tonight. That top ten reasons why we don't like the Eagles. No, we're gonna have fun tonight. We're gonna have fun tonight. Tim, uh, Tim came all the way down just for this. Just for this? Just for, just for, for It wasn't tonight. to stay home and watch football, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, there's nothing left to watch, so, yeah. Um, Tim and I have known each other a long, long time. And how has it taken, so we met in what, 2005? Something like that, yeah. Somewhere around there? Yeah. I told the story a million times. How has it taken 19 years? I'll tell you exactly why it has taken so long. Because, because Tim he's is, never asked me before. That's Tim goes, we're sitting here, goes, uh, is this going to be on video? And I'm like, yes, Tim, that's that's the way live video actually works. It actually is. <laughs> yes. He I had my name tag on. He had his name embroidered on his shirt <laughs> so he could be found in case, case, you, get lost. In case you get lost in the, in the park. We also put a tracking device on him. We have like a little like low jack on Timmy in case you get lost. Just remember, Tim, find a cast member yeah. and, and you'll be fine. Okay. There's no such thing as lost children, only lost parents. And then there's or, or in your case, your your beautiful wife, right, sitting off camera, exactly. keeping you in yes. check. Yes. Um, yeah. So we figured Tim is in town. We're gonna like we're, we're gonna like double and triple up. We're gonna get together. We had a nice little chat. We did. We had a nice little like very nice broski like hugs hug and cuddle hugs. Live, you missed the cut. Oh, it's going to happen again. Don't worry. We'll do it again. There it is. Wait. Wait, hold on. Let's get the cut off of this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's what it's all about. 
It's like hugging Big Al on the Country Bear Jamboree. Um, hey, who's? Doesn't matter. Um, what do you say, Tim? We could. I can't see that be, far. Oh, Giovanni but... says, Tim, we could be. You see why it's hard to. to Tim yells at me. He goes, Why don't you ever acknowledge me in the chat? Wait, I can do this. Now. We can watch this so we can see the chat here, too. So. Uh, but I still did Tim you. get Boathouse? No. No. no, 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 no. <laughs> that's not get crazy. If he gets an if he gets an egg roll in Adventureland, that'll be that'll be a lot. But by the way, where's where's my egg? I hope Tim cashed in on one of all those next time you're down meals that we've promised over the years. Not a one. Not a one. You've been busy. You've been researching Celebrations magazine while you're here. I've been busy. I've been busy. If I'm we, here. If we can meet somewhere tomorrow, where would we go? Because I might be able to make that happen. I've got it so far away. <laughs> What'd you say? So far away. So far away. Oh, goodness. How was Tony's? Oh, you know. Fantastic. Sorry. Excuse me for talking. I'm asking. We invited I'm asking. You. No, you didn't. I'm asking not Didn't Italians I? from Philadelphia how Tony's is. Oh. Uh, fortune is safe. Do you love uh, Olive Garden too? No. Wait. Be I'm, honest. I'm, be honest. Uh, listen. You used to come down here. Yeah. And I'd say, oh, Tim, let's go here. Let's go there. Yeah. Where would you say you were going to dinner? Golden Corral. Thank you. Yep. It was no, a joke. Stop it. Which, by the way, if you're watching at home, I mean, obviously you're watching at home. We're at work. Uh, my parents took me there once. The taco, taco bar was not. Do you remember when Pecos Bill had the taco bar? Yes. And do you know why it closed? Because why? people like you would go and go, oh, no, I don't mind a little sneeze on the Wait, bacon. maybe this will be my most embarrassing story. As to what you'd happened. go and go, oh, can I have an extra plate, please? And then you'd go up to the taco bar oh. and make yourself like a taco salad. That's wrong. With, of course it's wrong. I went, can I tell you this, I went to get a taco bowl, and they gave it to me, and I looked at it like a novice that I am. Isn't there supposed to be like tomatoes and cheese Say, on where's this? the beef? Like the lady from the Wendy's commercial. Where's the beef? She didn't scream. And, and, they, and they just pointed to the fixin's bar, and I sheepishly walked over. I was embarrassed, and I was never allowed back again. Wait. Did you not see when you walked in the door that gigantic? T I thought it was a salad bar. Don't you remember like the the pump of the cheese, like the the, the whiz, the whiz? Well, I got like, the, it. The, I do now because I got four Kingdom pumps of cheese. See, see, well, you abuse the cheese. Don't abuse. That's why we hey, can't. Cheese whiz is our thing. This is why. Really? How do you get your? Okay, first oh, of all, where point. do you go to? Where do you go to get your cheese sticks? Neither one of those two. Where do you go? A and A's. A and A's was this little tiny dump. Everybody loves to be Wait, so, so now, so now, you probably know better where to get a like cheese steak than I do. Like Steve is here, and Emily's here, and Betsy's here. <laughs> you can say hello to everybody. The taco bar at Pizza Bowl is the best. I cried when Al, you made Allison cry because you made because you got rid of. I, I didn't do nothing. Was it my fault? Was Paul was that? watching from Brooklyn. I've never seen Tim before. There it is. This is this is it. This is there it is. There it is. This is why this he is publishes it. a magazine. He just stays <laughs> stays behind a the, face a face for publishing a face a face made for books. I keep hitting my. That's all right. It's your first time. I understand. Right. You're nervous. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's right. I've never seen Tim before. There's another one. What else have you well, you, you did look like that little. You got that. You know my picture is in the magazine, right? Yeah. So when you, a few years ago, I think it was like yeah. right after, it was right before, right after COVID, we had the meetup in Disney Springs. Yes. It was around Christmas time, because I remember I was giving was out raining. ornaments. Yes. It was, it was gross. So many people come up to me like, that's not what I imagined Tim looked to look like. And I'm like, what? You know, and I can hear like a sketch artist there. So the people could have actually said what they pictured you to look like. I, I will say people, because this was a thread on your your website thing you have, and website thing. people said that, like, yeah. it's not what it looked like, and I felt like I was disappointing everybody. But then, what, what, no, wait, hold up, but then, what celebrity did you think Tim Foster looked like no, no, before, no. before tonight? George Costanza. <laughs> no, um, don't, no, don't the, 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 the question I heard was, now that they see this, 
where do you get off calling me little Timmy Foster? That was the question that I got asked. I think it just sort of, it just it just was birthed from a very organic kind of, because you were Bananas Foster for a while. Thank you, you for that. You were Samantha Brown Foster for Thank a while. Thank you for that, too. Um, I mean, uh, what, they, what's somebody called? Who is that? Handsome man. I don't know which one you Is that your daughter? Is that your Alan Alda, they threw out. Alan Alda. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> you know. <laughs> somebody yeah. said you look like Alan Alda. James <laughs> Conn. That's great. That's great. Listen. That's great. James Do not insult the, 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 the joy that is James Caan. Giovanni called you a handsome man. Nate right. Kalecki from Pittsburgh. Go Scotty Dogs. My daughter goes to Carnegie Mellon, so I have to... I mean, she's not going there for sports, obviously. Um, Yay, sports. It sounds better than gigantic to me, Foster, so... I don't know about that. Yeah, people thought that you were just sort of like, we were like the same person. Cause we, like, like, you thought it was you, you with a vocoder or something. <laughs> I pictured him shorter than Lou. That's very difficult to accomplish. That is, that is, what are you doing? I'm getting shorter than you. <laughs> Watch your hands down there, cowboy. Um, Sorry about that. Somebody said you look like Charles from MASH. Okay. I did see I'll that. take it. Uh, Wait, he had three names. Um, he was Charles the, Emerson Winchester. The, the third. Is, right, but his the real third. name was... David Ogden Skyers. That's it. Who the was voice the voice of? of? Come on. You don't know it yet. I do. Who is it? Uh, the, the clock dude. <laughs> See? Beauty and the Beast? The clock dude. Cosworth? Yeah. Celebrationsmagazine.com, everybody. Just... Is that right? Somebody said he's... Oh, you're melting. He's uh, what? Nobody is shorter than Lou Mangello. That's... That, would have a must. That's what you need to do. A must. Just like the, the '70s stash is the coming back. Stash. The porn stash. I mean, we're in Disney World. They won't call it the porn stash. We'll call it the, you know, we'll call it the '70s stash. Do it. Do it. You do it. I'll do it. I mean, I can grow mine by tomorrow. Look at this stuff. I shaved at nine o'clock this morning. Yeah. Next time, stand closer to the. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm not getting in on this. No. He was also the archdeacon from Hunchback. There you go. I was? Not you, him. Who, by the way, I think, I believe that Judge Claude Frollo, we may have talked about this once before, mm. I think he is the most evil Disney villain, period. Yeah. Like, forget like the fanciful fantasy characters. He's like a really bad human being. He's a human who's bad. That's different from a, a, a purple titan who's bad. That's there's there's a lot of like I mean adult sort of overtones in, in Hunchback which is a beautiful movie by the way and has yeah. amazing music but he's like a, a genuinely like evil dude. Yeah. That's I like that. I, like, I have to watch that again. Me too. I have to watch that again. I don't know what movie you're talking about. I'm kidding. No, I agree with you. I agree. That's a well good thing. And uh -oh. I. All right, wait. So uh, let's make it really weird for Tim. Tim, no, what? If you could. No, look. You have you have the most beautiful Disney princess. Dare I say queen? Yeah. At your side. Right. She would say that about me. Right. But if you could date one fictional Disney animated character, Ariel. who would it be? Uh, and not. Beyond a princess, it can be anybody. It could be anybody you want. Oh man! Say Ariel, because that's one you Yeah, but the whole fishy thing—it's got it's like weird splash vibes going up. But that's fine. You, Jasmine. Wow, that surprises me. Really? Yeah. Why? It seems a little exotic for you. And she, she, she a man of sophisticated taste. What's the name? Or Mulan. Mulan. Or, you said Jasmine. That seems that seems like it's a bold choice for you. I'm a bold kind of a gun. Penelope seems wrong to say it in that context, so I'm not going to. I don't know. I think I expected someone a little bit more... What were you expecting? Maybe a little more Belle-ish. A little, like, demure. Like, very book smart. Uh, very, like, warm and, and loving. Jasmine's a little bit of a... I'll, but I'll, she's, here, she's a wild child. Wait, I'll, I'll see your Jasmine. Okay. And I'll raise you, yeah, because I love me some Jasmine too. But since obviously she's taken by Tim, the Terminator Hunchback, Esmeralda. There you go. Can I say Loki? Is that wrong, dude? I mean, you go do you, but I have a lot of I have a lot of. Oof, I've, I'm gonna start running down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
write down a lot of these questions. Um, uh, we are, Meredith, uh, Jim O'Neill says, Merida. Mandy loves your Mickey fleece. There you go. Is you know, a, you know what? Is this officially licensed? Or? Uh, I don't know. No, you know what happened? <laughs> Listen, last last time we were here, Monsters, Inc. Cassie Tucker's watching. Hi, Cassie, Cassie Tucker. I was, uh, I was that guy on Monsters, Inc. I was that guy. I've never been that guy. I was that guy. And they called this out. They said, oh, you're wearing, what, what is that, velour? Uh, that's why I was do that you, guy. Do you have a velour tracksuit at home? Because everybody in Philadelphia does. If he look, does, first you insult my team, does then you insult my city, then you insult my one? cheese. Like laying around, look, you got nothing else to do this Sunday. Why don't I send you up a little velour tracksuit and you can like chill out of the game? You got nothing to do Sunday either. <gasps> no. Yeah. It never happened. It'll never happen. I'm going to get you a snuggie. Do you have a snuggie? He had nothing to do last Sunday. What? A uh, snuggie? Other than move. I'm going to get you like one of those big, like a... The blanket things? It's like the with blanket a, hoodie? With? With the hoodie and with, the fleece? With the pockets? With? With what? What's on it? Nothing. Oh, I thought you were going to put a giant no, logo No, I wouldn't because on. I don't ever wear it. No. I, and I don't I don't want you to, like, funkify our team's mojo <laughs> with all of your, like, eagleness. Emily says Snuggies are the best. I'm right. assuming that she means actual Snuggles as well as the Snuggies. Yeah. There's a lot of this Snuggies are the best. Somebody says hello, Captain America, and I don't know. Yes. I'm uh, Captain America. <laughs> who is that? Who you're? Is that who you're? Captain America. Chris Evans, yeah. And Loki. Now you're making. We it weird. we we have Loki now, fights. Now you make. I oh I thought you meant like at the. Never mind. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Darren says I have a velour tracksuit, and so does my dog. I, this is not a velour <laughs> tracksuit, people. It's just a nice fleece jacket. You're, you are very fuzzy. I'm, and I am not going to call out the fact that you're wearing your wife's clothes on the knee pad. I can't. I have a, I have yeah, a okay. thing on. Oh. <laughs> it's cold out here. What is this? Look how cool this is. This is officially licensed. It was you to say. Everyone just heard it. I have a Pittsburgh Pirates snuggy. Oh, this is good. But listen, we are tonight. We have. We actually have. Are we doing something? We have a mission tonight. We're gonna, and we, we've never done this before. We've never done a live show together. Before. We recorded. I did think we recorded live in Magic Kingdom before. You made me talk about Liberty Square. Yes, yes. you're wildly uncomfortable there. I and hopefully yes. tonight you'll be equally as uncomfortable because I said, look. Let's take advantage of the fact that we're here, we're together, we've got a little bit of heat going on behind us, and we're in Adventurers. What? No, I said the heat kicked off. There's a weird gold statue up in that corner. Do you remember what this used to be? <laughs> what? Do you remember what this location used to be? I, I do not actually uh, uh, ask you what, what uh, was this. This was the Zanzibar, Bra Zanzibar Bazaar. Oh, it wasn't Elephant Trader? Around the corner. Here, here. Yeah. And it's closed off now. This yes. is one of my favorite places okay. in Adventureland not to get ahead of the top 10 we're about to do, because if, when you walked in here, there were all these cool artifacts that had tags on them from okay. like different people, including like, there may have been something from Jasmine from Agrabah. And it wasn't actually from Jasmine, but according to story. <laughs> but there were so many great stories and details in here. And unfortunately, has the same thing for elephant tails. Like you, you would walk through yeah. elephant, and they had great sort of souvenirs that you couldn't get anywhere else. Um, I like when the parks and the overseas parks do this very, very well. You can only get certain merchandise in certain locations that is very much themed to where you are. Have you been to the overseas yet? Parks yet? No. Let's go. All we'll right. Stop at the boathouse. Go right. We'll go right to the airport, and then when, when we go to the boathouse, then we'll go overseas. Perfect. All right. Perfect. So I thought tonight what we would do, and, and this might be a complete train wreck. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Somebody has a Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, uh, no, it's not. Go by. Uh, I'm happy for Baker Mayfield. Yeah. I really am. I am too. Yeah, uh, it's good. Kendall, yes. So, actually, Kendall, you're you're getting ahead of me because Colonel Hathies may or may not come up on my list tonight, as well as its predecessor. 
Oh, I'm sorry. There's a bubble machine going off near us. So do you not? Well, you don't like bubbles. No, no. They might. We, we may get. Oh, I hope so. Some I hope we get some bubbles. We only need like a candle, a little bit of wine. It would be a very lovely evening. A very lovely <laughs> evening tonight. Um, uh, who are we talking to off camera? Um, oh. It's either A, Bob Iger, B, Tim's wife, or C, Jasmine. I'm going to go with B. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, yes, it's 43 degrees tonight. It feels, but the real feel is like five because. Not in here, it's not. Not in here, it's not. This is perfect. Becky, who? I know, it's, it goes so fast. Do you see? It's so hard to like keep up. That's why I have like a, literally have a second phone to try and keep up. All right, so let's do this. Let's do this. Right. This is not going to be a two hour. I know you like to do the really long shows. I know. You've got pages of I have notes. Pages, pages of notes. So it's five lines. There's literally <laughs> three things. So on. we're gonna do like a little, like little top ten. We're gonna record it. So I'm gonna even, even use a handheld recorder too. And if it's not a complete and utter train wreck, as most some of them are, to be, um, I'll use it on, on the podcast. Okay. This is a this is a, this is a, a night of firsts. I also talked to you for like months now. Why does he hurt me so much? <laughs> Can we go back to the cheese whiz comments and cheesesteak? Wit whiz? Cheese wit absolutely. Whiz. So you get wit whiz no, and onions? No. No, no. Pepper. No, just whiz. Just whiz. No onions. I'm not. You don't do like cheesesteak with peppers you gotta get the peppers. No, onions. peppers is fake. Peppers is fake. If you go anywhere and they say here's an authentic Philly cheesesteak and it's got peppers and mushrooms and cheese that's not an authentic Philly cheesesteak. Tell them to go try again. Oh. Nope. Now I nope. want a cheesesteak. Nope. Where can you Just get one around here? Not nowhere. No. You're right. You can't. Dang it. Sorry. I didn't have anything to eat today. I'm starving. Other than my factor meal for lunch, which was very, very good. But okay. I'm still very, very hungry. Um, I had shrimp skin. Uh, real quick, how did you two meet? Um, it was either A... Um, Why is everything a quiz question? We met at Mouse Fest in 2005. I've told the story a million times. I know. But, but I love telling it anyway. Tell it again. It gets better every time you tell it. It was, oh, a dark and, it was a dark and stormy night. We were in the swan in that teeny tiny little like conference room. Right? Yeah. It was very, very small back then. There was maybe a dozen of us that had like tables around. The, I wasn't the one of them. Not, I, I was just a... Lonely boy in a blog town. <laughs> Lonely boy in a, in a big city. And I'm standing at, at, the, at my table. Wait, and actually, should I preface this so you know why I was there? How did I no, end up there? I don't know. So I, I had the idea. I wanted to make something as a designer. And, hey, let's make a book. And we love Disney. And let's make a book about Disney. So I reached out to somebody in the community who wrote a book and was foolish enough to include their email into the minor notes I sent them an email basically how do you do this because I knew nothing and they said hey you know what you should do go to Mouse Fest you'll meet people and that's how I ended up at Mouse Fest wandering wow. through the hallway with my as you're about to finish talking and that's literally that's how I got my it. first you never forget that is there such thing as love at first sight I think there is because I'm standing there at my table and I'm doing my thing and and it's, it's like a scene from a movie. It was like a slow motion entrance, right? There's little Timmy Foster with his little book under his arm, just sort of sheepishly big, walking big around. Notebook. The big guy to the magic, right? Hands put hand, together. Hand, hand spiral so... bound. And you're like, hi, I'm Timmy Foster. That's, that's what that's his voice was back then. Right. And you showed me the book. And I was maybe two pages in, and I'm like, Son, you need to come with me. And I took him by his little arm, <laughs> and I walked you across to the other side of the room where my publisher, who also published, he published my, they published my tribute books, they published um, the Hidden Mickey's book, yep. they published Charlie Ridgeway's book, and I'm like, Kelly, this is little Timmy Foster. This is his book. You need to sign him. Long story longer. They did not. 
but it all worked out for the best. Oh, yeah. Because the Guide to the Magic, Celebrations Magazine, Empire, was, and I guess we just must have exchanged digits back then, you know. Or I kept bothering you to... Uh, uh, well, yeah, but because, it's... Because, you know. Oh, well, you lived up there at the time. I did. Near me, so we got to see each other on occasion. Yeah. In real life, so. We went to the Sheridan. We did. Don't make it weird, just to eat. And, <laughs> and then you moved down here, and it was all... And, but now, look, now here you but are. But now we're here. And I may have convinced you to stay an extra week, so... Possibly so. <laughs> I don't know it's... why you're rushing back home. Stop or asking me if I've taken Tim to dinner yet. No. He, you, but you had dinner before I got here, correct? In my life? No. Tonight. Or today? Today you had No. Dinner. You went to a late lunch? Yeah, to a late lunch. In Florida, that's dinner for most people. That's like the blue light, like the blue light special <laughs> for dinner. So, I put put this way, I did not have an alternate invitation. To take advantage of. It. Listen, you got to work hard on that. I'm Catholic and Italian. The guilt's gonna be pound way higher than that. But maybe we'll get maybe we'll get like a cheeseburger spring roll or a yes. egg roll on the way out. Yes. We'll, we'll ride the magic carpets of Aladdin. Well, I'm gonna tell you about that the, later. And you're scared, item, you're item number seven on the my top list. ten attractions Tim is afraid to ride. Number four will shock you. It's magic carpets of mm -hmm. Aladdin. So all right, let's do this. Let us stop all the uh, what nonsense. Is it? No, it's the stop all the. Yak Yak, Chick Chat, and Flu Flam. What, what attraction is that from? Kitchen Cabaret. Good lord. What is that from? Stop all the Yak Yak, Chick Chat, and Flu Flam, and let's get on with the show. Tiki Bird. Oh, yeah. Cranium Command. Good Tower God. of Scare. The Country Bear Jamboree. <laughs> Just realize that Tim looks like Colin Mockery from Whose Line Is It Anyway? I can see that. One of the two of us just got insulted, but I'm not sure which one it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll let's, do no. let's do this. Let's do this. We will. Um, we're going to try and do a little, uh, a little top ten, and see what happens. It may make the podcast. It may just be for your entertainment edification, or you know, it may it, dissolve it, it, into it a bit of giggles. It may just not end up happening at all. So. This is how the magic happens. I'm just gonna. I'm completely mean. I, no, I have no introduction. To is this there. behind the scenes here? This is behind the scenes. I'm also gonna record on here just in case. Oh, this is great. <laughs> you see, this is what happens before we start recording. I've never recording. seen this before. There's nothing to see. There's. Li it's literally just. Me I know. It's the first time recording. I've seen this happen. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I was going to say, what is, that, what is that music called? Oh, that's why Adventureland is cleared out. Why? Because it's almost fireworks time. So in Magic Kingdom, there's gonna... fireworks every single night. Really? Yeah. That means when I'm um, like on number nine, we're going to hear bum, 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 bum. podcast gold. Nice. All right. Podcast gold. All right. Oh, well, I have When you close your eyes and you think about some of your favorite aspects of Walt Disney World. What comes to mind first? Is it an attraction? Is it a character? Is it maybe a restaurant? Is it a certain place? Is it a memory? Is it a land? Is it the sound of those wheels on the carts as they go by in the background? For me, I am very much a nostalgic. Like, if you ask me what my favorite park is, I'm going to say Magic Kingdom. I love all the others for different reasons, but I love Magic Kingdom. I have so many fond memories here, and there's still something that is special about this place. And each of the lands within has reasons to love it and reasons to keep coming back. And today, tonight, we are sitting here on a chilly evening in Adventureland as we prepare to record live our top 10-ish reasons why we love Adventureland. I say we because I can't do it alone. I say top 10 and you of course have to think of, he goes by many names. Mm -hmm. He likes to be called Little Timmy Foster, Tim Bananas Foster, Tim Samantha Brown Foster, Foster, 
I just call him my longtime friend and publisher of Listen to How the Music, the crescendo of the music, as I introduce Tim Foster from Celebrations Magazine. Thanks, Lou. You should come up with a Jungle Cruise boat name for me. Oh. Can you name... Uh, you too. Can we name rivers that start with a T or an L? Tonga Timmy? I like it. And you should ask Little Mississippi Lou. <laughs> Wait, what? First of all, that's way too long. I can't have my ass well, all right, the light, signs only, a, so. Listen, I'm a little man. I need a little name for the top of my boat. Timmy Foster, we do not get a chance to get together that often. We certainly have not done a live show together. We're actually broadcasting live. It's Wednesday night around 8-something o'clock. And uh, we're broadcasting on WRL Live and recording our first top 10 together live. You just said, this is how, you, you're watching sort of how this all comes together. What are you, like, you excited, you're nervous, what is it? I'm excited, nervous, and everything. I'm, I'm mesmerized and horrified at your preparation. Lack of? No, it's it's a fascinating behind the scenes look at this. <laughs> this is fun, we've never done this before. We've never done this. This is a wild ride. And I love doing this, we have a live audience. We literally have people watching at home from around the world. We can make no mistakes. No, we can make lots of mistakes. We've made 93 so far. But this is what I love about doing it live. And, it's also, and look, I, you know, I don't edit the podcast. This may come as a shock. I don't, because I think exactly the way it happens, because I want you who's watching at home, you who's listening at home, you who's sitting with us, we have a special guest off camera. You want to pop in? No, she's like, no, no. Um, I want you to feel like you're sitting here at the table with us in Adventureland. The music is going, the magic carpets are spinning. It is a beautiful night. It's about 40 degrees out. And we're going to share our top 10 reasons why we love this land. You are my friend. You are my guest. And I, you have no notes, so I'm wildly curious to hear what you're going to say first. Well, you know, you, you talked about nostalgia somewhere in the open. And that's one of the things I love most. You can say this about pretty much any land in Magic Kingdom, but especially in Adventureland. I love how I walk in here, and I feel a connection. I'm going nostalgic right out of the gate. I feel that connection with Walt Disney walking through here. Uh, for, for the history, most of the, he, these were attractions he was involved with, the Enchanted Tiki Room. It's named Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. And the Jungle Cruise and Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, this is all I can, if you know the history of how the Magic Kingdom came to be and how Disneyland came to be, you just feel Walt's spirit in all of these attractions. Again, all throughout Magic Kingdom, but I think especially here for some reason. Um, we know how much he loved animals and loved the Jungle Cruise, which always brings up my favorite trivia question Luke, how many animatronics are there on the Jungle Cruise? You know, Tim, I was just reading the most recent yeah. issue of Celebrations Magazine, yeah. and I think that you included this this fun fact there. Uh, I believe the answer is, is, well, no, wait a minute. Wait a second. Are you going to? Uh, that answer might not be the same anymore, because now There's they have the new scene there. at the end. Yeah. Because the answer was there were zero, right? Because they were all using hydraulics and not audio animatronics. But now I wonder in that final scene where there's sort of the quote-unquote gift shop at the end, yeah. Are any of the figures I in have there animatronic? I have. I've noticed new scenes in there. I'm ashamed I didn't really notice them before, but they kind of. I think the new scenes kind of came. So let's just say that there are none. There are we'll no animatronics, there are none. and Historic. that's sub, there's there's an asterisk because we may be completely. Wrong. I will ask somebody what? who whether they okay who it has very close knowledge to this project if there are in fact any animatronics on the, the, the attraction now. Okay, but that being said, feeling Walt Disney's spirit in the attractions that he had a personal hand in putting together. Uh, even the Tiki Room has that special place knowing that that's kind of the birthplace of animatronics and how that all came to be. And it's a long, fascinating story, but um, that's the first thing on my list is just that sense of history and connection with Walt Disney as you walk through. You know, Tim, I, I have to, to pause for a second because oftentimes when we do these, you know, Tim's not necessarily paying attention to my facial expression, which is good. Because there's usually there's a lot of, like, head in hand, You're shaking of my head. Yeah. I absolutely love that that's where you went first. Yeah, they see that. Because I, too, and maybe it's not just it's not just because of the season of life that I'm, that I'm in, but I am, you know, I, I, I'm very sentimental and nostalgic. And we've talked a lot, about, especially over the last few years, about the keeping of Walt in, in Walt mm -hmm. Disney World. And I love the fact that that's where you went first, right? Yeah. It's Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. It's Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. 
And I feel that there's sort of that spirit and presence of Walt here. And just, you know, Adventureland hasn't changed very much over the years, right? Other than maybe the introduction of the magic carpets of Aladdin a number of years ago. The attractions that are here have been here. And there's something about that, right? Walt said it'll never be a museum, but I, I sort of like that, that, that there's a, not a lot that is really sort of come and gone in Adventureland. And it's to a certain degree, you know, not that Walt walked here, but it's sort of like the way that Walt would have wanted it that way. Well, what, uh, it's a quick story. This isn't an Adventureland story, but we had this yesterday. Just this idea of the connection with Walt Disney and still remembering. And we talk a lot about how feel like a lot of people these days, younger people, don't realize Walt Disney was a person and so on and so on. We were over in Epcot at the Walt Disney Statue at Dreamers Point, and I was taking pictures, and, and Lisa, who's sitting over next to us, was standing there, a random cast member, not the photo pass person, just a random cast member, sweeping up, whatever, start up a conversation, young, too. Excuse me, sir, can you please stop climbing on the Walt Disney Statue? Right. But just started a conversation of how much he loved the Walt Disney statue was there, how much Walt Disney meant to everything we see, how he started this, how much he meant to this individual cast member. Who again, it was a, a young person. It wasn't like someone who's been here 50 years. So it was nice to see that the connection is still there with a lot of people, as much as we think maybe it's gone a little bit, but it's still there. That was nice to see. Yeah. Nothing to do with the venture land, but it's a nice little... No, but I mean, we've even talked about, too, that, you know, over time, it seems like there's been a distancing of the presence of Walt and Walt Disney. I actually just posted in the archives on one of the archive shows, you know, finding Walt in Walt Disney World, references to Walt, because as time goes on and there's less and less, and, and I remember being here October 1st for the anniversary, and I was like, why is there not, why is there not a rededication ceremony? Why is there not something about Walt for this very important anniversary? But maybe that's what we're trying to help do, like making sure that we keep Walt in yep. the Disney parks, just yep. waving our little, planting our little Walt flags wherever we are. Um, I'm going to go out of order to a certain degree because our conversation, the music that's playing in the background, will bring me to I love, 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 and, and you can't obviously hear it now because the fireworks are going off behind us. I absolutely love the music and the atmosphere of Adventureland. If there weren't so many steps, you and I would be skipping. <laughs> We're taking all of you up to the top of the Swiss Family Treehouse, not just for the beautiful views, but to hear Swiss Polka in the background. Yo-ho, a pirate's life for me. The tiki birds. Like, and even just the, the background music that plays here, I think is so immersive in terms of, of storytelling. And I'm going to sort of maybe combine one of the other things that was on my list, because one of the things I love are the transitions, especially Magic Kingdom, from land to land. The portal, to a certain degree, that used to be here is not here anymore. That, that curved, that arched bridge, which when you stood in, in the, the walkway coming from Main Street, you couldn't see into Adventureland, right? It, your view was blocked by the arched bridge, but what did you see? You saw nothing but lush greenery. That, there was that sense of, what is it over that bridge? What, there's a sense of, of adventure, right, in terms of, but if you pay attention to the audible transition that's happening behind you as you hear the ragtime music of Main Street USA start to sort of transition into those deep jungle rhythms and drums of Adventureland, it really helps the placemaking and the storytelling without having to necessarily stay with say word. You can close your eyes and sort of make that walk, be careful of course, but you can make it and sort of know exactly where you are just by the background music. I literally, first thing on my list, second, musical transition. Yeah. I had that on my list. And I wanted, I'll just piggyback on that. This is a small thing that I was throwing out there. As far as the transitions go, uh, the Crystal Palace Restaurant building, I was supposed to say one of my favorite buildings in all of Walt Disney World. And, um, the, the funny thing is, we could be having a 10 things we love about Main Street USA and could be talking about the Crystal Palace building. But I think, as far as the transition goes, and I'm with you, I think the transition from Main Street to Frontier or to Adventureland is one of the best, for whatever reason. Um, it's so seamless, but it's natural. And the Crystal Palace restaurant does a lot for that, being that it can be at home either in Victorian era of Main Street USA or the colonial era of the setting of Adventureland. And it's just a 
just as much at home in either spot. So I think it's a beautiful, but it's a beautiful building in its own right. Great food. You'll take me one day. Um, and brilliant but I had that, right? That yeah, that, that, right, like it, it helps. To, it, right. Yeah, it helps to bridge. Yeah, as you go around, it's not an abrupt. This architecture stops and then this starts. It's like a nice, smooth transition. And as you as you walk around, you go from the Crystal Palace being one of the storefronts on Main Street USA in that old style any town USA thing, to this this uh, glass uh, Victorian era building that's kind of lost in the jungles as it's sober growing as you go over the bridges, and it just kind of seamlessly puts you into this place, and vice versa if you're going the other way. Yeah, so. and, and I love that you pointed that because I, uh, there's actually that little sort of cutout on the bridge, and I love standing there because you yeah. can just sort of hear a little bit of that rag time, but you can sort of just pan your, your head from left to right and watch that transition happening, even from the very sort of delicate flowers and trees on the Main Street side to the lush, overgrown sense that you get in Adventureland and, and how beautifully and, and seamlessly they incorporate different areas of the world. It's the Caribbean, it's Africa, it's South America, it's Asia, all in this single land that has no definition of this is meant to be a certain area. It all just sort of, it's this wonderful sort of company that that, that comes together seamlessly and that transition is a big part of it. There you go. Yeah, I love it. But it also has a nice transition to frontier land, but that's a tale for another show perhaps. It is, I think, the only top 10 things that we love about the show that we're missing. A Frontierland? Frontierland. I need to come up with some. Why don't we wait? Why don't we do it? Why don't we wait until Tiana's opens? Because I have a... Sh Fantastic. I have a sneaking suspicion. I meant because Splash Mountain was always one of mine, but I should wait. But I cannot wait, by the way. I've seen, I'm, I'm down here seeing it starting to be unveiled slowly as the scaffold comes up. Oh, I can't wait. All right. I think, I think it's your turn. I think it's your turn. I went, well, I mean, actually, I, I stole was, a lot of them. Well, I was since I did, I had musical transitions and Crystal Palace as two entries, and I kind of talked about both of them. I'm going to call that my next entry, so I'm going to. All right, so I'm going to throw it back to you. This is why top tens are ish because they all sort of ish. look. Because we, we're talking about the music, we're talking about the transitions, we're talking about the the theming. One of the things I love about this land, I, I think there's, and that's part of the reason why I love Magic Kingdom so much, is I can come here and don't have to ride anything. Because the views are part of the things that I love. Even where we're sitting right now, right, having this view out over sort of the, the, the sort of central square of Adventureland, having the views in, into, throughout, and from Adventureland are some of the best. You just mentioned, for example, the views if you climb up the treehouse and you get that shot, a, a wonderful perspective on the hub and Cinderella Castle that you can't get anywhere else. As you look from place to place, you get a sense, yes, this is meant to be more, you know, Southeast Asia, where that is more Africa, that's more Caribbean. Depending on what your vantage point is and where you're looking, you can get some incredible views, not just in the land itself, but even places like, I love riding the Jungle Cruise, not just for the skippers, but some of the incredible views that you get from there as well. And I love the some of the details and the thoughtfulness that was put into it. So for example, if you're in Adventureland and you're looking at the building that houses the Tiki Room, it looks like it belongs in Polynesia somewhere. But if you go to the Frontierland side, it was specifically designed that, yeah, I can, this, those, those, um, Animals with the horns. The, the, right, because right, it's not sort of, but they make sense in Frontierland right. the same yeah. way they make sense in Adventureland. Yeah, which is great. Um, Actually, speaking of views, one thing, I don't know why I noticed walking around the queue, or not the queue, the area leading down to the Jungle Cruise, finding views of the Swiss Family Treehouse I never really take the time to appreciate. So, um, yeah, there's so many views. I'm with you, though. The top from the Swiss Family Treehouse is the best, which reminds me, I haven't been up there in a while. I need to go. Maybe when we're done Maybe here. we should go. Because at night was my part two of that, Swiss Family Treehouse at night. Um, the views and the fact of how you feel so far away from civilization up there when you're not, but it is, uh, it's kind of eerie and spooky and creepy, but exotic and fascinating to it, right? so. It sort of sounds like walking up to Tim Foster's That's house. That's exactly right, right yes. <laughs> Without the Swiss Capulca. Right. I'll try, but. I'm but. sure Swiss Capulca has played in your house. Maybe, before. yeah, maybe, maybe. 
Funny Baker, one of my, it really is some of my favorite background music anywhere is Swiss Walker. Yeah, I agree. It's good. Can is you that, play it? No. All right. No. All right, are we going to my next one here? We are. Wait, I have to check my notes here. <laughs> oh, let's see. Can I talk about since we're sitting? I don't know if I've told this on your show or not. How many other shows are you on? What? How many shows have I been on? Uh, how many other people? Like, you just said, I don't know if I've talked about this on your show, which makes me think like now you're cheating on me, like going, oh, which you're first like entitled well, I'm, to. I'm glad, I'm glad you listened to our podcast that we have at Religiously. Celebration. But, Religiously. Yeah. Anyway, over there, we are sitting not too far from the magic carpets of Aladdin. And you joke, because you said my top ten rides I'd never been on, and you joke that this was number four or five. I have been on magic carpets of Aladdin. And I think I just told you this story, and I'm going to tell these fine folks out here how your daughter, your daughter, who is a sweet, a sweet child, she was four or five at the time, we went on Magic Carpets of Aladdin. She was given control of the stitch. Oh, I remember this. She turned Magic Carpets of Aladdin into Orange Team <laughs> Mission Space. And to this day, when I approach Magic Carpets of Aladdin, it's with the same trepidation as I do when I approach the Tower of Terror, <laughs> thanks to your daughter. <laughs> I just wanted to tell that. I just wanted to tell that. You were a little ashen, right, so right. right. <laughs> Yeah, but... But, but how about this whole area of the magic carpets of Aladdin and the detail that you can find here? Um, I, I, every time I walk around, look at the the ground, and you find all the pottery shards and the hidden Mickey's and the jewels. I'm always feeling like I'm finding something new. I take a picture of it and realize I've taken 27 pictures of the exact same thing. Does your wife yell at you go, Tim, you've taken this picture 10,000 times. Why are you doing it again? I think the comment usually kind of goes along the lines of, oh, here we go. <laughs> that that kind of thing, like really. Yeah. Wait, I think we found a new one. But uh, it, it it's one of the most. Well, you I, you even clued me into this. The detail that's found in the littlest of areas, the walkways and the benches, the lava benches. I think you've heard. Of. Um, and it is a fascinating place to walk through and just look out for the little tiniest of details. And uh, when they did the magic carpet, I say it's new, it's been there forever at this <laughs> point, but um, but seeing those little little touches that you think are so above and beyond, like why would they even think to do it, but they do, and they're fun to look for. Did you just call Magical Carpet to Aladdin new? Because I think it's been new. I like, know, I, 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 I did, but then it's Has not. it been there for 30 years? Because it might, Pro it you might, know, probably. When did Aladdin come out? 94? 96? What? When did Aladdin come out? Yeah, 94? I think this is saying much more about me than it is about the Magic <laughs> Carpets <laughs> of Aladdin. That's how we know we're getting old. We're like, Magic Carpets of Aladdin was just a couple of years ago. Did, did you hear about this newfangled thing they got? It's called the Haunted Mansion. They've got ghosts in there. It's great. Wait till you see. But do you remember what was here before that? This was It was a big open space with benches. That's where the tile came that's, from. Yeah. It was from the benches that they took that, out. And that's how old I guess it really is, because I don't really remember what was there before. But I did. I was here before it came. But, but yeah. And actually, it's funny, because the details are escaping me, but it's one of those... They've made such an incredibly detailed backstory for all the details you found there, that it was a, a lamp that, that was broken or something when it was... Yeah. And it, that's why the pottery shards are there. Um, I kind of got the details of that backstory, but um, to just come up with a story for there's little pieces of pottery that are in the ground. Well, that's one of the things that, that I've always loved. And sometimes, you know, I don't know if it's just that we aren't as aware of it or maybe they're not as great. But I remember for years, like everything had a reason, everything had a mm -hmm. story. I've told the story a million times. When I was researching my audio tours and there was a, there was a box, it, it, it was, it, the, I can see it, it was a black box in the Main Street train station that had the letters R.L. Nicholas on it. And I couldn't, Tim, I researched, <laughs> Google, I, well, I went to everything, Google. I talked to everybody, yeah. and then finally, I got, I was, I, uh, Dave Smith from the archives, he literally wrote the A to Z encyclopedia. I was with Dave Smith, and I became friendly with him, and I said, Dave, you're the person who knows. I said, this, this, I'm gonna get my answer, this is it. And, he, and it was like a very fatherly move. He said, Lou, sometimes a box is just a box. And I'm like, okay, maybe not everything does have a story. 
but we but all wish that there was this like great big book of Imagineering that just had it all in it. But that's the thing, though, because whenever I'm walking around and I see anything, like we're in Imagination and I'm looking on the desk, I'm always seeing what's new there, and there's an envelope marked with, I don't know, like three letters in it, I forget what it is. I, off the top of my head, it couldn't tell what it was, but in my head, that must mean something. So I took a picture and, <laughs> by gosh, I'm going to Google it and figure out what it is, and it may be a folder is just a folder or something. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. And actually, that'll lead me into one of the other things that, that I love about Adventureland. When we talk about our, our sentiment and history, and I love the history of this land. I, I remember vividly being here as a kid with my parents, and you know, it was only Magic Kingdom about that back then. So we, we did spend a lot of time in Adventureland and, and running. But I remember what used to be, and we were talking earlier, where we're sitting now was literally part of a store. This was Zanzibar Traders. It had the little um, yep. sort of weather vane, and that, and I loved this store because not only was the merchandise that was sold here unique and themed to this land, but there were such great details up in the rafters. I have pictures that I love of, you know, trinkets and treasures that came from Agarbah, and it was addressed to Jasmine and Aladdin, and mm -hmm. references to 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, that when I came to the parks with friends or anybody that could sort of grab off the street, I wanted to show them these cool details. Nine times out of ten, like, dude, I just want to ride the jungle cruise. Like, right, well, but you But for know. me, I love the, the, the thoughtfulness that was put into this. Somebody mentioned earlier Colonel Haythi. Tim yes. was trying to, was asking Jeeves who Colonel Haythi was, but <laughs> I remember... Jeeves didn't know, by the way. The, what was the very first extinct attraction ever in Walt Disney World? Oh, come on. Right. I'm, that's what I'm here for. Because I'm a nerd. <laughs> I swear I've dated before. The Safari Club Arcade used to be right next door. Yeah. Really? Really? All really? Right. And it, it went away. It, like, it opened in, in early 72 and was gone by the end of 72. It was a small little arcade and had like those old like shooting games in it. And um, it was really, really well themed. And then it, went, and then it became Colonel Haythi's Safari Club. Colonel Haythi's Safari Shop, something like that. Um, and then it, like, it's like a sunglass on now. But it was, oh yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> but it was also it was a clothing <laughs> store for a while, which I loved because up on top of the building there was this huge spindle that had different colored threads on it, and I'm like, oh, it's brilliant. They have all the different colored threads for the clothing shop underneath. They sell sunglasses now, but it's fine. <laughs> but it's fine. Wow. But it is that rich history that that is here. Like I love. I still love taking people asking who's Boana Bob. Who's Boana Bob? I don't know. Come on. Who is Boana Bob? You know who Boana Bob is? You know who Boana Bob is. I'm looking at the people watching live. Have you... Is he an Avenger? <laughs> you see why I put my hands on my head? Is he Team Cap or Team Iron Man? Oh, my Lord. He was the original super... This Boana Bob was the original superhero. It was Bob Hope. You see? From the movie Call Me Boana, 1963. I'm the only nerd that... Lisa's just shaking her head, like, really, Mangello? <laughs> like, you sure you, you sure you dated? Like, I swear. <laughs> but I love that those little details still remain, right? These classic attractions that have not really changed very much over the years, right? They haven't taken away the Swiss Family Treehouse and made it something else. Mm -hmm. They still have that connection to not just Magic Kingdom's history, but Disney history and some of these... And, and some things have gone over time. So there used to be at the exit of the Jungle Cruise, there were all these little crates that were addressed to... I have different... pictures of those, yes. Right. Lisa said yes. you have 8,000 pictures of them. That's idea. right. Yes. But they were addressed to characters and actors like Tommy Kirk, Esquire, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from Swiss Family Tree. So I love being able to connect the dots for people from what was here to what is there and how the story of Adventureland came together. But I love, love, love the history that's here, the different shops that have been part of the Pirates of the Caribbean experience. Do you remember the Pirates League? Yes. Did you ever get made up in the Pirates League? Please say What yes. do you want me to say? Oh, I want you to say yes. What, want, what are you expecting want, me to say right now? I want Lisa to pull out pictures. You know. No, I'm very gratefully yeah. I did that. Did you? I did. I took my kids. I did. And I love it. You're going to make me cry because my kids are back oh, in right. school now. Oh. Um, but yeah, like, I, I, I sort of think back. Lafitte's Portrait Shop used to be there. Way before your time. No, no before my time. Yeah, it's fine. That's fine. I have a I have a way back though. Yeah. It's not there anymore. That my daughter and I used to do. Remember Shrunken Ned's 
Junior Jungle, Jungle, Jungle Boat. Boats. Aww. Yeah, I, I love those. Chocolate dreads. Chocolate I love Chocolate those. Dreads. I could. Oh. Hi. I could never. She's watching. She's watching. Hello, yeah, darling mean, daughter. <laughs> darling daughter, do you remember Shrunken Ned's Junior Jungle Boats? I Just could never it. steer yes. them. Right. I mean, that but was, it was so that wasn't much the fun. point. That wasn't the point of being. It was a quarter well spent or whatever it was. But. And it was the, the simple pleasures, right? The simple pleasures. Why we love this place? Why we love this park? Why we love this place? Mat Adventureland is full of simple pleasures. There's no thrill rides here. There's a walking treehouse. Well, There's magic carpets on auto on steroids. Other than that. Other than that. It's this. It's the beauty and the simplicity of this land that I love so much. Yeah, and that's and the shrunken nets was one of those. We talked about these things a lot. The things that you remember, you adore, but they're not on any guide or big. You know, call that a guide map. They're not the e-ticket that they're not the D to see. It's just you stumble across it. It's there, and I, I do miss them. I wish they would bring them back. But uh, somebody so, watching live, Jessica Bainbridge Ferry, who's watching live, I'm trying to read the comments as well. Says, "Is it true you used to be able to send a coconut home for an adventure land? Absolutely. Oh, from the store right here, you used to be able to that you could buy a coconut I didn't know that. and you could put and they would mail it and you you could send it for an adventure land. I didn't get mine that you. Mailed me? It's, it's the Postal Service. It's on its way. All I'm right. sure it's still okay. coming. I'm sure the Postal Service is watching, too. I love you, Postal Service. <laughs> I'm going to blame Blue for that one. Um, what else are we being asked? I'm just quickly looking through some of the other... All right, was that, was that yours? I don't even was know that... whose turn. I think that was mine. Shrunken Ned's Junior Jungle Boats was one on my list, which doesn't really count because it's not there anymore, but I remember it so well. Uh, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't say... and and. Not to sort of spark the debate, which quote unquote, which pirates is better, whose pirates is better. They're all wonderful pirates. I think Disneyland has a better pirates attraction, but I love, love, love our queue of pirates. Okay. I love the yeah. fort, the Castillo de Moro. I love the story that is told within the fort. Depending on which side you go in, you see a different part of the fort. You see the armory, or you see where people worked and lived and played and slept. I love, love, love. The Mark Davis story of the chess and stalemate. Wait, here's a football reference for you. I think I told you this one before. There's the two pirates that are at the stalemate playing chess. We know the Mark Davis story, right? Yeah, I got an update on that story, by the oh, way. You do? Oh, yeah, oh. well, tell your story first. No, no, you go. You no, said no, football. You no, no you it's a long story. Oh, never mind. All right, but I'm going to so, tell it anyway. But. So Mark Davis designed, who was an avid chess player, designed a stalemate at one point when it was being cleaned or refurbished. The the stalemate was ruined. They actually found it in Imagineering on the back of, like, literally, like, a back of a napkin, and the, the stalemate is back for the, the pirates playing chess, which is why they're still sitting there. But, and I don't know if this is still there or not, I have a picture of this, and I will find it. One of the pirates is wearing a white skull cap, and the side of the skull cap that you can't see from the queue has something written on it. Oh, no. Do you know what's written on the right side of the pirate skull cap? Or at least it used to be there. It's not go birds, I take oh, it. Oh, stop right? it now. Don't <laughs> cry, eagles cry. No, almost as bad as that. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. No way. Way. Really? I will find Why? that picture. How? But what this, happened? I, <laughs> there must have been some kooky Imagineer who, it was the Namath era, so maybe it's, he was still sort of... It's about how long it goes since they won the Super Bowl. It's fair enough, I guess. So yeah, there's a there's a little Jets reference in there. But yeah, I, I, I love, love, love. And if you spend time in the queue, we always saw it looking up, looking around. Really take your time to look up and see. It's a, it's a, The show building is huge, and there's parts of the fort that are sort of built almost full height in the queue. And the other thing to look at too, and it's you can actually say this throughout the entire land, but even in Pirates, it's a silly detail. I love the light fixtures. I love the unique lanterns and light fixtures, specifically oh. inside the queue, the cobwebs that are there. As you start to round that first corner, the well that's there, and the, the forced perspective of the stairs leading up to like the second level where you imagine people would live. It's really, really well thought out and designed, and I think it doesn't get necessarily the love or attention it needs to, or I'm just a huge nerd, or D, all of the above. All of the above is fair. Yeah. Especially, was that C? You being the, well, <laughs> no, the chessboard. So I've heard this. We, we, we all know this story. I, I, and like many of you, I've taken pictures of the chessboard many times. 
This is one of those moments. Tim, you already have a picture of the chessboard. Move on when we're going through the game. And I looked at the chessboard, and I'm looking at it, and I know the legend of being stalemate, but I can clearly see checkmate and one. Um, what's going on here? And actually, I looked at other pictures I had. I looked at pictures out on Google. And if you started looking, you'll notice the chess pieces are all over the place anymore. So clearly, that, that was true at one point, the story and how it came to be. But for a long time now, I guess that has not been the case because I guess the chess pieces do move around quite a lot. I think I cleaned them. They're not put back in any position. Sometimes they're put back, whether it's a stalemate. Sometimes clearly someone's going to win. Sometimes it clearly it doesn't make sense. Like that's not even a legal position. But um, so it's one of those things. It's kind of like the same thing. It's like the three Mickey uh, plate hidden Mickey and Haunted Mansion is kind of gone now, it seems, for eternity. That seems like another detail that might be lost in the midst of time. My Still a good about story, that one is that the cast members... And it never was, right, I know, officially but Officially not... A, the, there's only one official hidden Mickey in the Haunted Mansion. Right. I and know where it is. It, right. I know where it is. So do I. Wait, are we oh. talking about the same one? I don't know. You go first. Mine's the in the hand of yeah. the will in the crypt. Yeah. yeah. So as you're as you're just about to exit the graveyard, mm -hmm. it's almost like to sort of look over your shoulder to the mm -hmm. right. It's almost like in like a box. Yeah. There is this the like crypt. silhouette the of of a, a specter yeah. sort of holding what is a hidden. Yeah. And I always look at is that when I lament that the three plate hidden Mickey isn't there, I make sure that one is still there. And I tell my good friend Steve Barrett, it's still there, Steve. Tim's literally like a little old man, like waving his cane. Right. That little hand, that hard hand, that's not remember there. Back in my day when I was Aaron. Yeah, so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's me. I mean, if you're in the if you're in the haunted mansion, and you hear a little old man yelling. That's me. I kind of want to ride a haunted mansion with Timmy and just like broadcast it live, so you can all see it. All right, what else is on your list? Oh goodness me. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Take off my glasses. Can I say we did? It's another show, and actually, this was like the winning entry, I think, in another show. But the musty water smell in Pirates of the Caribbean. Wow. But not just the mu musty water smell, but the, the aromas of Adventureland in general. Because I, I actually was going, that time I read Road Pirates of the Caribbean, I was now looking forward, as we all are, to the musty water smell. But noticing just other aromas that you smell, like the, the gunpowder smells and all these other things. Um, the, the pineapple in the air as you're walking by, Philip. I think I'm imagining that. I'm not sure. <laughs> but... Um, but, and even when you go and do the Jungle Cruise, and there's just that earthy, watery aroma. And it, um, I mean, other lands and other parks have more uh, deliberate scent uh, attractions. Um, but there's still something about the, the smell of Adventureland, to call it something else. But like I said, the winning entry, I think, in our top smells of all time was the musky water smell and pirates. But it's not the only one. And, and the, the caverns in Pirates is still one of my favorite places in all of Walt Disney World, just because of the smell, but because of the music, because of the mood, because of the mist, because of everything. So. I literally, I'm not kidding, I remember recording the first time we ever did the top ten smells. And when I said the musty water, I'm like, nobody's going to get nobody's it. Nobody's going to get this it. This was like the seminal moment. Like, we all bonded as a community because we all sort of understood what we were talking about. And that was sort of like the... I get you, you see me type moment because we all know what the musty water smell is. Well, I think because you see our daughters watching right now. Yeah, you see, yeah. we did this show, we did this topic later on our podcast, Not Dripping, Not Good. She had the same experience. She thought musty water smell and then had the same thought. Nobody, nobody thinks this. is that, well, How weird am I? And she Googled it and sure enough, pages and pages. And then she felt like, okay, I, I get it. You know, So, yeah, it's one of those... It's one of those, you, well, I'm sure there's a lot of them, but when you're talking to a fellow Disney fan, you can spot them. All you have to say is, must be water smell. And if you get that look of recognition, you go, yep, yep, yeah. we're together. So, you know. How have you not designed a musty water smell t-shirt? Yeah. Maybe I have. Maybe I'm wearing it right now. You haven't said anything all night long, so it's not working very well. <laughs> That's a uh, good idea, though. It is. A pin. Oh, I'm going to make a pin. We're going to make a pin. We're going to make a pin. And, 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 and a t-shirt. Maybe we'll write about it in this thing we do on the side. You mean Celebration Magazine. at yeah. celebrationspress.com? Oh, could be. Could be, yes. Don't drink, don't, do don't not drink, drink the, the musty, musty water. bromine water. Bromine water. <laughs> uh, speaking of smells, let's, uh, how, can we, Sorry. how can we go without mentioning 
So the food of Adventure Land. Cheeseburger it, spring rolls. Which I'm, I'm which not a, had, it's a relatively recent addition, only like the past week. You haven't had I've one I've not yet. had one yet. I feel like I'm about to have one. Thanks if to my good If that stand friend. is open, we're going to get like All nine right. of them. I, I feel like the line the was, was wrapping out to... It was. The yeah. word is out about the cheeseburger spring rolls. And certainly, look, you can't talk about Adventureland. Adventureland put Dole Whip on the map. Like, I, I never... Nobody ever heard Dole Whip before. And now you go other places and you want like a pineapple whip product because it can't be called Dole Whip unless it's actually Dole Whip. But it is a staple of Adventureland, whether you get pineapple or some of the other sort of funky flavors. And now you can get it in not one but two different spots with the return of the orange bird a number of years ago, which I just thought about. Now, now if I put you on the spot and I gave you the whole menu between the two, you got citrus swirl, you got Dole Whip, you got Dole Whip float, you got Dole Whip upside down cake. What's your go-to? Are you a classic? Are you a purist? Or are you are you going adventurous? So I'm gonna I'm go? gonna play I'm gonna put my lawyer hat on and say Tim, uh, no. when when am I having this? Because All right. if it's 137 degrees outside, okay. my answer might differ because I might want a little bit of juice. So I might All want right. to do a little float. But I'm normally gonna say I'm a straight. Just give me the regular dull look guy. That's the way Walt and God intended. So you're a purist, but at, at worst you'll have a little pineapple juice with it. But that's where I'm going to stop. Absolutely, I'll even sort of every now and then, you know, I'll try one of the flavors. It's just a the, the, little but, swirl, and, but I'm. And but, citrus swirl doesn't enter into your conversation. No, no, no. So, but that's what I'm saying. Because sometimes you just, I because I think citrus swirl is like a breakfast food. You got your milk, and you got <laughs> you got your citrus. You got, you got okay. right? So right. it, it's right. It's like the breakfast. Why are you laughing? How do you think I got this this Adonis like <laughs> body? <laughs> like just to find this with citrus roll. Do you you don't like the orange bird? Oh, for those of you watching live, I just heard from a reliable source off camera. Tim doesn't like the orange bird. I love the orange bird. That's not nice. what I'm. That's not what I'm hearing. I might need I, to move the microphone to a to someone else who can confirm. Or look, I have a fear of birds. In general. Did you say peck his brain out? Is that what you They pecked his brain out. That, oh, that explains a lot. Oh, I understand. There, there, was, was, a, there, was, was, a, there was an incident. <laughs> there was trauma. So now when I see Orange Bird, I just see those dripping talons of death staring me in the face, and I know what he wants. To peck what littles of your brain. Because there's a, you, you're just saying so you know, you're I love getting, Orange Bird. We're getting a lot of comments uh, and really not loving the fact about you not loving... What? Uh, Doris Ivansky Schooley says, what? I love the orange bird. Mel Pick says, we love I love, love the orange bird. Tim, I'm, I'm not, I am, this is not this me. This is what happens. Don't shoot the messenger. She said, sissy Tim. <laughs> Valley loves the orange bird. Karen has an orange bird from 1979. Is Tim Guano Joe? <laughs> I'm just, don't ask me. I love orange bird. What? See, this is how rumors start. Don't believe uh, it. It's on the internet. I got a little stuffed one. Losing what I call MGM always and forever. Always. Going out. Why? Why would you get that? I'm a stuffed orange bird. I love it. I don't I remember. It. I don't remember that happening. Yeah. I, I think we need to make up like an orange bird basket for for little right. Timmy. I, I, I will take it. I'm citrus swirl all day. I'm orange bird. I'm orange juice in the morning. Who I sang the really? orange bird song? Anita Bryant. Oh. Tell me I don't love the orange bird. Who was the Sunshine Tree Terrace originally sponsored by? The Florida Citrus Growers. Florida Citrus Growers of Florida. Of Florida. Incorporated in Florida, growing citrus <laughs> for America to love in Florida. You used to get the free... That's yes, right. I, I, didn't get, on I didn't get... The, she got the free... I think this childhood trauma that's really sort of yes. manifesting itself in the orange bird. Yes. Tell me about your parents, Tim. Did they not? Oh, what? No. <laughs> no, they, they had, they had, they had parakeets. <laughs> oh, let's yeah. just leave it at that. I'm also a little skittish in uh, Flights of Wonder or whatever we're calling that show today. And the Tiki Birds. Well, I know they're okay. And they're, says we're gonna have to vote you off the island. <laughs> uh, no. Oh, well. I love the York. No, come on. No, I, I do. I do love the York. Tim's like he's literally kicking me under the table. Change the topic. All right. Yeah. Is there anything else on your wait, non-existent list? Wait, hold on. Uh, honorable mention or anything else? Why are you putting the microphone in my face? My uh, uh, there's something answer. I want to mention. And I, 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 I was just saying the most overlooked attraction in all of Walt Disney World is the Swiss Family Treehouse. That's all I had on my list, but we just talked so about it. So I think, I think and, I, and I'm happy we're saving this for last, yes. because I think 
a very, very wise man once said, it takes people to make a dream reality. And there's one attraction here that lives and dies and continues uh, to continues to entertain millions of guests from around the world. One of the number one thing that I love about Adventureland, and it is all the other number one things I love about Adventureland, are the Jungle Cruise skippers. That with, without your Jungle Cruise skipper can make or break your Jungle Cruise adventure. And there have been times, and if you've never done this before, and you're gonna you get an exceptional skipper. When you get off your boat, there's usually a, a number of cast members there, including oftentimes a lead. I will wait, and I'll say, listen, can I talk to... I'm not going to talk to a manager, but I'll look for a lead and say, listen, I just want to say, Captain Timmy was exceptional. Because a lot of times they only get complaints. Yeah. I want to make sure to recognize some of the, the skippers who, day after day, hour after hour, just the cycle of repeating the same jokes and narration over and over again, but when they make you feel like you're their first and only most important boat of the day, that is what sets the skippers apart. And, and I have had more exceptional skippers than I've had who, eh, just okay. But it really makes a difference in, in the Jungle Cruise experience. Well, the, I mean, they're funny, which is great. Sometimes you learn something. Like we had one yesterday. I was like, did you know elephants have a great memory? Like, they never forget anything. And then she said, I wish I could remember that too. But you never know. But... Yeah, the great... Was that your Jungle Cruise joke? Was that it? Like, no, that... actually, we do. We, we've talked about what's your favorite Jungle Cruise joke. Do you, like, do you have a, do you have a favorite Jungle Cruise skipper joke? Oh, man. I mean, there's so many. There's so many that... There's one doctor, two doctors. We call it a paradox. That's fun. Now you see, now you're putting me on the spot. I don't know. Yay. Top 10 Jungle Cruise... I mean, there's I love the that there's classic. Some, that's right. I'm, I love that some there's that some you always get. Some that you always get. But I also love, especially when a cast member has to riff at the end when you're yes, waiting. Yes, when you're that, waiting. Yeah. And maybe sort of like digging into the archives and getting sort of unique jokes out. That's that's a talent. And the fun thing too, like sometimes they'll tell you facts and stuff which is cool. Like, did you know elephants have a really good memory and they never forget <laughs> anything? And I wish they would have memory <laughs> like that. Did you see? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Um, speaking of the Jungle Cruise, I'll just throw one last honorable mention in there, and I, I could have included this in food, but it's not about the food, although I do really, really enjoy it. It's always it. about the food. I enjoy Skipper Canteen a lot, Oh, but yes. I love, love, love the connection to the jungle. We talked about the depth in storytelling, the incredible depth in storytelling, the connection to the land, the characters, the extension of creating new characters, and more importantly, the connection to the SEA, the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. I love eating in that back room. If and when you go to Skipper Canteen, stop and look at the bookcase. Yes. And look at all the books. It is a treasure trove of punny and funny and wonderful references, not just to Adventureland and Jungle Cruise, but characters from Disney history, movies from Disney history, amazing books as well as individuals. And like other, tra I see the books uh, referencing the Skyway in Tomorrowland, if you had wings, like things like yeah. that. So. Yeah, and I, wish, I actually meant to, I don't have a list because I would read some off, but there's so many to choose from. One thing I liked, I discovered early, was the uh, Businesswoman of the Year plaque for Alberta Falls, which is a nice yeah. connection to Albert Falls' grandfather, I think is the backstory. And I actually haven't been there in a while. I don't know if the, you have the backside of water, the joke, you know, they have the backside of the menu, and they told this story. And also, I don't know if that's still what they do this was years ago when we checked, but yeah, but how how rich the story is there and how it does tie in to the lore of the Jungle Cruise if you're paying attention. And if you don't pay attention, it doesn't matter. And it's take your time like when you're walking on your way out. Like look at like the message boards. Like mm -hmm. not the ones online. The ones inside, like the ones like uh, where, where messages are tacked up because it really sort of gives you a sense that there are sort of same way like in Dino Land, right? So sort of the boards mm -hmm. in Dino Land where, where some of the, um, the, the professors and students have sort of posted things there. The same thing it, exist here, including if you look really carefully, this is a super obscure reference. Do you remember back D23 Expo, maybe 2011, for the Jujus? Remember when they made the little Jujus, the little sort of carved artifacts? Like, they were no. little, like, so there was like seven or eight different, there was like a little bird, there was like a, a gecko or something. There were, one of the little Jujus, the little parrot Juju, was hanging inside one of the message boards. There you go. I didn't know. Yeah. You Seems like what's a juju. I don't know even sure that that's. I think it's. I think you know? they were called jujus. Okay. Little sort of like carved wooden tokens. I'll take. I want one. 
eBay. eBay is your friend. eBay is All right, my is friend. Is there anything else that is on your list or that you forgot or that you're thinking of right now as you're looking as uh, No, that was really about it. I'm, I'm watching everybody go by. Have you seen the fireworks? It's all bundled up to take on some pirating adventure. Jingle Cruise at Christmas. Oh, the Jingle How Cruise. Fun. How fun. Yeah. Even actually Adventureland at Christmas because Pirates of the Caribbean gets a little bit of a Christmas little bit, not much, but a Christmas overlay on the outside. And, uh, so much fun. So I will then finish with the, the very last thing on my list. It's this. It's this. Right here, right now. No, don't look around. It's literally, it's this. It's Adventureland at night, right? I yes. think Adventureland is beautiful at night. Right? I think Adventureland and Frontierland are spectacular at night. But just what we're doing right now, like look at this wonderful seating area together with friends, the music in the background, the cart coming by is a cart cue by. one more time, like the jungle cruise off in the distance, like just the, the overall ambiance of this land at night, especially when you can enjoy and spend it with friends and Tim, like, look at all, I mean, you, you can cry. Oh, wait, we're on, we're, you can see this, never mind. <laughs> they can see that you're faking on, the, on live. What? Yes. So yeah, Adventureland at night, <laughs> Adventureland in general. Uh, and I'm what, sure- One, one up, actually, the, the, we've talked about lands that change at night versus the day, Adventureland is at the top of the list. I think There's a lot did, of contenders, but this, we did one, but Adventureland is definitely one of those lands. Night. Yeah, the, 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 a lot of it changes from, the, uh, I don't want to say fun, but more lighthearted mm -hmm. and adventurous to mysterious and yeah. spooky at night. Um, Really and I think I think I think Adventureland and Frontierland mm -hmm. complement themselves very very well, especially at night. I think Frontierland yeah. also sort of walking down the street at night is beautiful. But for those of you who are watching live, and those and you, who is at this virtual table with us, screaming into your Zoom, at your car, at your dog, if you're walking a dog, like, <laughs> my God, how did you people forget this? I want to hear from you. Tim wants to hear from you. I mean, he's not going to read it, but I promise I will read it to him. I want to know what did we miss or what is your favorite thing or the thing that you love the most about Adventureland. How can you let me know? There's a few ways. One, I'd love for you to call the voicemail. I'll play it on the air. It'll be on the air, like old-time radio. I could have phoned this in. <laughs> you did. 407-900-9391. Well, that's 407-900-WDW1. You can come over in the clubhouse. I'll post the question there at www.radio.com slash clubhouse, or you can email me at lou at www.radio.com as well. And of course, of course, when you're done doing all that and you're getting all snuggled up in your bed and you've got the Swiss of Polka playing in the background, that's when you should go. To, I mean, you can do it any time of day or night, but go to celebrationspress.com. Why? I can say you, you can go there first, you know. Go there. All right, go there. No, we, uh, we have so much stuff going on. We have lots of plans for 2024, Lou Mangiello. What? Yeah. <laughs> Spring issue is in the works. Our 100 years of Disney Magic Anniversary book is still out there for sale with its free pin and free shipping. And we're planning on some new books, new pins, lots of new pins. I'm thinking a musty water pin or some sort of thing Sign will go I on. Want, I want the first one off so the press. So keep, keep an eye out for that. So um, all of that's at celebrationspress.com. We have a podcast too. Maybe Lou will come on once. I'm, we're just, I literally, it's like high school all over again and college and all. I'm sitting by the phone waiting for it to <laughs> ring. Mom, hang up the phone. Maybe Tim's going to call right now. Dad, get off the computer. Get off AOL. I'm waiting for he's, Tim to call. He's going to make me look bad. I can't do it. <laughs> this will happen. I would let, listen. This will happen. I'm ready. I have a microphone. All right. There you go. That's right. You have equipment. I do. I, I, have, a, I have a microphone. All right. I can, I can wait. Well done. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll come up with something. I will certainly link to Celebrations Press in the show notes. And I would also love to know what is a top 10 that you'd like to hear Tim and I Maybe you, maybe somewhere from the nation will invite in again. I'll get it lightened and load for you, so you only need to sort of think of three or four. So Thank you. And it can, it can be top ten reasons I love the orange bird, because I do love the orange bird. I really do. Do you hear that sound? Listen, that's the sound of you backpedaling. That's I didn't, it. see, I didn't say it. They said it. You're you know, into, the, like the I Jungle all, Cruise, you remember? Was, yeah, yeah, we all couldn't, yeah, we couldn't you're all thinking it. Uh, uh, somebody, a couple of people in the chat said we missed the spinning camel. How do we, we're that's sitting right there. How yes. do we miss the spinning camel? Actually, they missed us. We, we've been sitting like 20 feet away yeah. from it and haven't gotten hit yet. It might so. be a little chilly for the spinning camel tonight. So. I don't know. There's a puddle out there. There's somebody sadistic over there. So. <laughs> 
and and the spitting, uh, misting tiki statue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do which want to, oh, I which I have tiki. fallen for that I one a couple times. Statues. Timmy Foster. Yes. This was fun. Am I? Can I say who? And yeah. and yeah. Mrs. Timmy. Can I see her first name? Too? I want to make yeah, sure. That's fine. Can you, I sign the release first? Wait, oh, there right. she is. There she is. I was afraid. <laughs> no, it's fine. Oh. The reason why, why? Because I can't pay, you know, the, her fees for making like appearances. Are right, high. it's over for you now. Yeah. Lisa, always good to see you too. I love these two. I love these two. Love I'm guy. not going to say it to them in yeah. person, but I do. Oh. Uh, you're, oh. you are a good man doing good things. But you and said it like six weeks ago. I love you. I didn't? Yeah, I have. I think I had it on video. Oh, yeah. delete that. Oh, yeah. well, I do. I do. Um, you're a good man doing good things. I am blessed oh, to know you. And uh, that fateful day where we met in uh, Lodos years ago. Now look at us. We look exactly the same. <laughs> I might be a little shorter and a little older. Yeah. Me too. Well, I think we're a little, even a little grayer too. Hey, you're still on the air. There we go. And look at that. Look at that. Look at that. that, that Gordon. That's uh, Pitt McGee. That's a wrap. Tim, it's you, says uh, Jacob Campbell. Now everybody's going off to the boathouse. Ah, listen, it's so mm -hmm. far away. It is far away. I mean, if Jeez. you really want to go to go to the boathouse, I could probably. Send no, it's it far. It's too late. I'm too old to eat late. It's my problem. I'm a late night snacker. This is. Oh, you are. Yeah. Oh, I'm a late. Why don't we see if we can like get a little well, your little little spring roll action. I hope the spring roll guy. If what's the backup? What's the backup if they don't have spring roll? What can we eat here in case they don't have it? Well, I don't know what's what's available back here. The Skipper Canteen, Tortuga Tavern. Uh, is it, is Tortuga Tavern open? I don't know. Oh, it's never <laughs> open when I'm. Yeah. I don't come here that often. I want to. I don't know what time the park closes, yeah. so maybe we'll. Is it what? Oh, I thought it was 10 o'clock. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, you're vain. Time when? Time when? It's 8. No, it's 9. No, it's... Kelly says popcorn. Great show. Thanks. Did you guys like this? Did you guys like doing the the live thing? This was so much fun. We should do this every week. Maybe once I don't live here, Maybe once. Why not? That's a damn good question. I mean, it's a darn... Sorry. That's a darn good question. I live here so I said, didn't I promise you noodles at the poly? Did I promise you noodles? You could do that too. Oh, there you go. Go to Three Bridges. Oh, Anthony Molly. Like that's so three have you ever been to Three Bridges? It's really far away. You know three bridges you know three bridges is the whole What? So is this a Disney thing? It is. Alright. So uh, have you ever heard of Coronado Springs? I have heard of it. I have not been there. What? I have never, you never visited. I've not oh, had the opportunity to stay or visit. Call your travel agent. And tell them you're staying a little bit longer. I'm the travel agent. All right. Call yourself. You're gonna say, so, Grand Destino Tower. Yeah. You never been. Never been. But okay. I know. I know. It's beautiful. It yeah. And literally in the middle of the water. Yeah. It's like this little floating like restaurant. There's three bridges that connect it. Yeah. It's this over water restaurant. The food is so wonderful. It's a little chilly for you now, but when it gets warmer, we'll go there. That's an invitation. It is. That's an official Added to the invitation. List. There's a lot of places we need to go, Tim. We're going to try and knock one of that, one of them out tonight. Somewhere in Magic Kingdom. I promise I'm going to feed Timmy Foster something tonight. <laughs> he loved his orange bird citrus swirl. <laughs> what said you? I know. I'm seeing this a lot. Dude, Grand Destino says Kelly Wood. This is awesome. You should do another Wednesday night show, even if Tim was at home. Thank you, Ooh. Thank you for those of you who are sending stars. It's very that's very thoughtful and generous of you. Pirates has a ten minute wait. Three bridges or Dolly really? Lounge. Oh, Dolly Lounge is nice too. Steakhouse. Oh my god. Steakhouse seventy one burger. Go to the lounge. We've been there multiple times. I'm not saying no. Yahtzee. I'm not saying that. No. If there's a if there's a spring roll, we can get that like it's walking food, and then we'll go to there. You go. All right. Done and done. Good night, everybody. Um, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. None of this happens without you. Um, seriously, like uh, the the podcast is the, the heart of like what I do. I so, but like this is the soul because I love being able to do this 
with you live and have you here and your comments and support mean so very much. So, wait, let's see if, it, if I'm still able to, wait. There, look, 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 look what it does. No way. Wait, watch this, ready? Boom. Wait, watch this, it's gonna do it. Can uh, I do that? Do that, yep, do the heart. Oh, look at that, there you go. Wait, I have to remember what the other ones are. Um, Don't do anything. I, I think this, wait. Wait, I, I gotta remember what the other the other hand gestures are. Wait, there's more hand gestures. Don't get. I'm not weird. gonna. I'm not flashing it. I know it's it's there's thumbs up. I thought there was like. Wait, I don't remember. Wait, is it? I don't remember what the other hand gestures are. Wait, how do I make the fireworks happen? Um, wait. Wait, somebody remind me. I thought I thought this was it. This was not. This is not fireworks, right? This there it is. Oh, look at that. There you go. See? Sparkles and fireworks. There you go. Little Timmy Foster from Celebrations Magazine at celebrationspress.com. I love you. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for spending and sharing your time and your night with me and with us. We're family. We're all family. All of us. Give me a big hug. All of you. If there's a big hug emoji, I'd put it out there. Oh, it's so weird. Oh, it's so weird. But it's so good. so good. How can something go wrong? Be so right. Listen, have a great night. Thank you again. See ya.